So we are almost come to the end of the Laundry Talkathon, and I would like to say we're kind of saving the best for the last. We're talking today about setting the right metrics uh, to have a commercially successful laundry operator can make. Now, without the proper metrics, it is kind of impossible to set a profitable business that kind of runs efficiently. So how and what are these metrics or KPIs? Uh, and how has they changed during the pandemic? This is something that we will be revisiting today during this discussion at the Laundry Matters. So before we hand over the session uh, to the panelists, I would like to introduce the panel to all of you. Uh, so we want to start with Mr. Nikos Pastras, the fabric care expert from Diversity Global Solutions team. Uh, he is an experienced laundry application expert with 18 years of experience in the laundry chemicals industry. He shifted to Diversity UAE in 2014, where he worked as a regional laundry expert covering the Middle East. In 2017, he joined Diversity's global solutions team, supporting professional laundries around the world. Also joining the session today is Mr. Abdulaziz, who is the Mr. Abdulaziz Ibrahim, who is the head of sales of Just Clean. He's a highly qualified and dedicated professional, and Mr. Abdulaziz offers more than 12 years of experience in cultivating and maintaining relationships among business partners, while also developing strategies to increase revenue and raise awareness. Now, he was formerly working in many companies as part of the founding teams like Talabat and Carriage.com, and he's currently heading the head of sales of Just Clean, that's in UAE, Qatar, and Bahrain. Now, Just Clean is an on-demand laundry marketplace application in Kuwait, and they have kind of evolved from a marketplace application for laundry services to becoming a more holistic ecosystem solution for laundry services. Also joining the panel this afternoon is Mr. Andrew Glassford, the director of NewGen. He comes with him with 25 years of industry experience and Mr. Andrew Glassford was working in and for a lot of laundries of every size and scale. And at one end of the spectrum, this means the kind of building brand for new state-of-the-art facilities. And at the other, it's helping to introduce global best practices into the 30-year-old plant. Also joining the panel is Mr. Abdul Samad, the Laundry Business Development Manager and Laundry Application Expert from Reza Hygiene. Now with more than 27 years of experience in the laundry industry, Mr. Samad has worked in different Gulf countries and mostly in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And he has also worked in UAE and Bahrain in commercial laundries as Senior Operation Managers. Now, for the last five years, he has worked with Reza Hygiene as the Regional Laundry Division Manager and Application Expert. And also joining the panel this afternoon is Mr. Mohammed Abd Abdal Wahid, uh, the Operations Manager at Natronic International. Now, Mr. Mohammed has been a dynamic member of the Natronic International since 2013. And as an Operations Manager, he has handled a vast range of projects for UAE's biggest central laundries and even five-star hotels and theme parks and hospital facilities. Now, an industrial automation engineer, he specializes in robotic programming and automation, and he has gained experience in consultancy and design of laundry setups, ensuring efficient workflows. And last but not the least, we have with us Mr. Steve Anderton, the managing director of LTC Worldwide. Now, Mr. Steve started his journey in the laundry industry in 1986, and he joined the LTC Worldwide, that is the Laundry Technology Center, in December 2007 as the technical director. In 2012, he was appointed as the managing director of LTC, and he's currently the treasurer of Society of Hospital Linen Service and Laundry Managers, and also the advisory member of the TRSA Middle East chapter and he's also the past president of Midland Launderers Club. So thank you so much, all of you, for joining in today, and over to you, Mr. Steve. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this, uh, this session. Um, the first question I'd like to pose to the panel is, what are some of the key areas that need improvement in a laundry in the new normal? And Abdul, would you like to start off with that question, please? Uh, sure. Uh, see, as uh, we are in 2021, after this COVID-19, uh, so some of the, you know, uh, 
the new normal situation of that we we are as an as an uh, service provider and say the, what we found the mostly focus on uh, the area where we um, uh, see this is which is called you know importance of increase of hygiene especially the personal hygiene overall cleanness uh, in your process or even in the, in your premises also when you're talking about you know uh, the healthcare laundry as is these things is already uh, you know focus and uh, working on it but once you come up in especially in opl laundries and other things what we find out the main important focus from the customer end side especially they discuss about the training of their staff when you are talking about the training of the staff they should you know they are main focus especially on hygiene hygiene when you are talking about hygiene is personal hygiene what is personal hygiene very important the cross contamination what is cross contamination how it has happened the clean and dirty linen you know the process what is if you are talking about the um, uh, healthcare laundry uh, you know the barrier control what is happening this one this should be make it sure barrier control the very important things when you are talking about you know uh, the process when you are talking about the process generally in, in healthcare linen they are take, taking care about you know the disinfect process what is called uh, uh, thermal disinfect and chemical disinfect. But here, after you know this uh, this uh, new normal situation, what we find out, even especially when you are talking about the healthcare laundry and and other laundry also, even MOH Ministry itself is involved, and they make it sure when you are doing talking about you call uh, thermal disinfect, which is called temperature, or by chemical disinfect. They make it sure that the what the chemical when you are injecting that like that the titration process is on 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 your same parameter like the release BPM whenever you are using uh, oxygen bleach or whatever this chlorine this one they make it sure the light amount the process is happening properly. Second, when you are talking about as I mentioned up this uh, uh, hygiene process, hygiene process, personal hygiene is very important. You how to clean hand wash process. Even the cleaning process of your laundry itself is very important. The very, very important, as I found as a service provider, all most of the laundry focus emphasize in due during this pandemic period. We did, um, personally, I have done a lot of training session, even Zoom, because they mostly focus emphasize on training. Because this session is, in, uh, you know, is more emphasized, especially on hygiene, training session, best laundry practice, Make sure you know what the right program you are using, right proper way of uh, you know disinfect your process. One more thing, what we found out this the the uh, people looking at cost effective things. I was reading somewhere that we we need to go back again in your normal situation, uh, which is before this COVID. This one is approximate around 20 to 22, 23, and or 24 that one. So people are looking how they are doing a cost effective way to process on your process. So that's mean fully automatic process. This one, make it sure you nothing manual dosing will be on automatic dosing way, how you can make more cost effective uh, way to process your loan. Great, thank you, Abdul. Uh, Mohammed, have you anything to add to that, please? Uh, sure, uh, thank you, Steve. A very good question from uh, from our perspective, from uh, laundry supplier perspective. I think it's it's very important to focus on when we talk about cost saving. It's important to understand the cost on the laundry. So automation and machines can help you understand where is your where is your cost has been associated. Uh, whether your dryers are are over consuming power or or your staff are not efficient enough. Those are all very important factors to look at. And I think technology allows laundry managers to have this data. And with this data, you can understand the laundry managers and the cost evaluators can understand what's going on really. Uh, one of the projects that we've done recently uh, there were like, this is very, I want to mention a very small like example, but it maybe opened the eyes on, 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 on the things. Uh, they, had, they had a challenge, the customer had the challenge to, to move trolleys 
which is every tro every laundry has this issue. So they were pushing trolleys for 30 or 40 meters all, all day long. So we've put some people, they make the study. We found that you could save minimum four man, four man, four staff in each in each shift by having a solution to come to transfer this linen, like this uh, garment or linen automatically. We gave them the solution and the the the, the return of investment on this solution was less than a year. What I want to what I wanted to say here is people are not really focusing on those small things, but those many small things that can make a big difference. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. I think the one thing that we're noticing in particular is a, a drive towards standards. Uh, certainly in healthcare, uh, in the UK in particular, there's been a big rush, not only for healthcare laundries, but for uh, mm -hmm. hospitality laundries to implement standards. And in particular, uh, the European standard EN 14065, which is the European biodecontamination standard, which actually proves that the laundry is safe after it leaves after it leaves the facility. So that's one of the big changes in the new norm that we're seeing. We're seeing a drive towards implementing good, uh, deliverable, and measurable standards. Okay, thank you. thanks, guys, for that. So moving on to the next question, uh, what do the panel think are some of the essential elements that are driving laundry improvements? Um, so, uh, if uh, Nikos, if you'd like to just kick off with that one, please, that'd be great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, some of the essentials, essential elements, I would put them in the form of KPIs. You know, we're going to talk about KPIs today. It's not enough to just talk and define what KPIs in a laundry operation are. We need to have, we need to get a system to follow them up. We need to follow them up on a daily basis. So let me give you a couple examples. We are talking about energy savings. So energy, yes, is a major KPI in a laundry operation. So if I went to a laundry right now and asked the maintenance uh, engineer, when was the last time he checked the steam traps? in their operation, he would uh, mumble a bit or hesitate to answer me. So uh, especially if I asked anyone in the laundry operation, when was the last time you checked the vacuum in your ironer? Again, silence would be the first answer. The point is, and I, I hope I made my point, we need to set up KPIs and we need to be able to control and follow them up. How can we do that? By setting up a mechanism, a system that can allow a laundry and operation. And the M40 is the same method, yes. Yes. Uh, it would be the RAL certification. So I'm going to certification, which is another essential element. And I would dare to say it's a differentiation for any laundry in the new normal. Perfect, thank you. And Andrew, what are your views on this? Well, it's interesting to hear about the um, the vacuum on the ironer. I once got told in Nobel that all the vacuums were stored in the housekeeping department and there were none near the ironer, <laughs> which gives you an <laughs> indication of the level of some of the knowledge. I, I do think some of the things that are kind of driving improvements, the first one is the landscape's totally different. Everyone's major focus and the medium kind of short, medium term is going to be, there's going to be less revenue unless you're in healthcare laundry, really, or you're in a manufacturing sector laundry, you're going to have less revenue. Hospitality is going to be down for a while. Retail is going to be down for a while. And we don't quite know when they'll get back. Will there be more working from home? Almost certainly. Will there be less dry cleaning? Almost certainly for the kind of near future. So a lot of these things are going to be pushed by less revenue for us all to share within the market. So people are either going to be more efficient or some people are going to kind of go over. I also think the other thing is we've become more data savvy over the last few years. So probably most of us are wearing an activity tracker that tells us whether we've been a good boy or a bad boy with the amount of steps we've taken. And so we're used to getting fed more data on performance, even for ourselves, 
and it's actually quite a good one because that that shows I don't know I've got a ten thousand step target and if I've got a twenty thousand step target I'd ignore it most of the time because I know I'm not going to get that far and it just shows you've got to have the data there you've also got to have a realistic target that you can work towards that will make you go the extra mile. Oh, thank you. And again, Abdul, have you anything else to add to that uh, that point about what's driving laundry improvement? Uh, see, uh, if you're talking about uh, something, you have to look, looking, you know, uh, the cost controlling, reducing your cost and uh, something. So when you are talking about the important KPI in your process, uh, for me, uh, if you're starting from, from, from our point of view, prospect this one, something, you know, you're talking about the, the cycle time. What is your cycle time? For example, what is your step, current step, what you have, let's say, you have your washing uh, uh, with uh, six six step or seven step, three rinsing, two rinsing. How you can adjust and you can save from that uh, point of view. What is your water current water consumption? Uh, what sort of water you are using? For example, you are using RO water or you are using uh, fresh water. What is the cur uh, uh, current consumption after what you adjust? What is the um, uh, the water consumption you have? Same as the energy, when you are talking about energy, is everything involves. When you are uh, talking about energy, it comes electricity, it comes fuel, steam, and everything. If a small adjustment in your one wash cycle program, which is approximate 10 minutes uh, minute in one cycle, in January, in all, you can have huge saving and uh, make a huge difference. It's uh, same as there is some other things, you know, you have the important KPIs in our prospect, what is your rewash? What is the rewash percentage? What you have? What is the cost of chemicals? This one important factor as Nikos have identified some of the things uh, like uh, uh, you know in your process like uh, flat work and he's mentioned uh, for for us the when when you are working with huge a big scale tunnel washing process is this important things what you are currently checking you know. Uh, the total numbers of empty compartment, because when you are talking about empty compartments, you know, the fresh water consumption, the average loading in, in, in your uh, tunnel compartment, when you are average loading also, so the, the, uh, the process of your tunnel, the, the tanks, is uh, the pumps are working okay or not for working fine because any pumps is not working automatic is consuming the fresh waters. So these are the some elements you have to see in your process. Once you are talking about water quality, when you are especially energy, uh, energy, when I'm talking about energy, it's covered completely everything. When talking about steam, electricity and all everything. Water, when you are talking about, in uh, in especially large scale industrial scale laundry, we mostly emphasize water. Actually, as I mentioned, this one in little bit improve in your cycle, you can use saving. Generally, the classical wash when you're talking about uh, ten year or five year back, you are talking about classical wash process, which is approximate 20 to 25 liter of water, made eight to nine liter of water, this one. So this is called a huge saving. There is the key parameter area where you have emphasized your API, generally look after this okay. one. So tunnel, when you are talking about washer extractor, there are some specific. When you are talking about tunnel, there is some additional KPI you have to monitor to give, you know, like empty compartment and uh, other points I have mentioned. Brilliant, thank you, Abdul. Okay, so we'll move on to the, on to the next question. So what kind of KPI metrics should be used to monitor the laundry performance? What are your feelings on this as is? Hi, Steve. Uh, Hi. Um, good question. Uh, I would echo Nico when we're thinking about setting KPIs for laundry to follow and to improve their better service. This is one of the things that we try to do to just claim that to set up KPI for the laundry business to have an ecosystem for people to follow in the market and to offer a better service for clients. There are certain KPIs indeed when it comes to the market. Uh, first of all, we're talking about the turnaround time of the service that the laundry offer based on its uh, premises and capacity. If we're talking about 24 hours, 48 hours or 72 hours, the quality of service, which is one of the biggest KPI that the laundry has to focus uh, here in the market or in the GCC region in generally. All the laundries, we've seen a pattern that they face a lot of sometimes missing item, damaged item, 
uh, how often this has happened, how they can reduce these mistakes happening from the laundry, and how possible they are willing to compensate for customers for certain uh, situations happen to build such a compensation policy for clients here in the market uh, and to willing to improve their complaints. So we see the laundry, their complaints, how they're trying to improve and reduce these complaints for the laundry. One of the most KPI also abiding to the customer pickup and delivery choosing by customer when we work in ecosystem and an e-commerce system sort of clients when they come, they choose a certain time for pickup and delivery. How the laundry is focusing more in going in time for pickup and delivery for uh, for customer to fulfill their need because you work in very tight frame of time here. That's most of the KPI that we are trying and trying to generalize many, but like this is the main KPI that we try here to focus with the laundry and for them to have a better service offering for the customers in the market. Perfect, thank you. And, and uh, Nikos, what are your views on KPI metrics that should be used in the laundry uh, performance measurement? If you ask me where I would start from when, if I wanted to set up KPIs, I would start from the operational cost pie of a laundry operation. So I would focus myself on the biggest cost factors. The biggest of all is labor. And uh, before I start explaining, let me state this, that when talking about KPIs in a laundry, everything, but everything, literally everything, has to be expressed per kg of worth linen. So when we are talking about any kind of consumption, even salary stuff sometimes, it's expressed in man hours, but the product of a laundry is worth linen. So when we set KPIs, it's better to express it per kg of worth linen. The major KPI here is labor. So let me tell you a short story. Uh, I once stepped into a laundry to have a discussion with a laundry manager about how to reduce the energy consumption in his operation. And of course, the laundry manager uh, was asking me to, to see what we can do in terms of wash process. So when I stepped into the laundry, I took a look at the ironer and I saw two persons loading small napkins on the ironer, while the ironer had four positions for loading napkins. So I just took the laundry manager with me and I told him, could you please assign two more persons in that ironer? He did it. And then I got back to him and I told him, you know, I just saved 20%, at least 20% of your daily energy consumption. Can I go home now? Excellent. So this is how laundries this is just an example how laundry should optimize their labor hours, their manpower. Number two cost factor in a laundry operation, not in a commercial laundry operation that is out of the rental business, but if the laundry operation is either in a rental business or we are talking about a non-premise laundry owning their linen, so linen purchase is number two cost factor in this cost buy. Uh, in that sense, I will tell you another story. When I go to speak with purchasing managers, especially in hotels, they will only talk to me about two parameters about their linen. When it comes to towels, they will refer to GSM. And when it comes to bed linen, they will refer to thread count. So the customer will tell me, for instance, my towels are 500 GSM, they're of the best quality. Short answer, I don't care. Because GSM, 500 grams per square meter or 5,000 kilograms per square nautical mile is nothing but uh, an expression of weight. I don't care how heavy the towel is. I care what the, about the quality of the thread. What kind of fibers does this thread have? So again, it falls on us, the whole industry, I would say, people who have the knowledge to start educating the customer on what to ask for when it comes to linen purchase. Because okay. GSM and thread count are good parameters, but quite irrelevant when it comes to defining quality. 
Okay, thanks, Nikos. Now, um, Nikos, we've got we've just had a question following on from that from uh, Rakesh uh, Darija, uh, and he's asking you, Nikos, um, do you have any benchmarking of processing for linen? Uh, so I think what he's asking is, you know, kilowatts per kilo or or uh, uh, or that kind of thing. Is, is there any? you know, rule of thumb metrics that you use for to measure a, a good operation? There are some, uh, there are some averages we have done in diversity. We have done extensive measurements in different laundries, steam operated, um, uh, gas heated. Uh, we have done numerous measurements, but in order for me to, to reply accurately, uh, I wouldn't dare to give you uh, response right now. Maybe we should take this um, this question with uh, the participant offline. But I can tell you in in short, when we are talking about water consumption, we are aiming at the water consumption definitely under 10 liters per kg of linen. And mm -hmm. modern machines and modern chemical ranges. I'm not talking only about diverse chemicals, but modern chemical ranges can achieve this kind of water consumption and especially yeah. when it comes to a tunnel operation we have seen tunnels that can consume even less than three liters per kg of linen so yeah. Yeah. anything less than 10 for washer extractors is satisfactory and i i would say that anything between three to four liters per kg in a tunnel operation would again be okay and andrew have you anything to add to that yeah i mean overall i was <laughs> echo some of what Nikos is saying and it's so difficult to give figures off the bat because it can depend if your water's coming in at 20 degrees centigrade then your heating costs are going to be a lot lower and if it's yeah. coming in at five degrees are oh, you wash your extractor do you have mm -hmm. to air con the plant all the time but in general when you look at laundry KPIs I agree there have to be two measures so labour has to be equated either to piece or to kilo if yeah. But you've also, what we would always say is you start with your top two cost measures, which excluding rental laundries are going to be labour and utilities, and you measure those per kilo or per piece. Utilities should always be per kilo, so it helps to have labour there as well. And then you should have two customer-facing KPIs at least as well, because we could all save money by deciding not to use any wash chemicals for a week, deciding to wash cold and switching off the lights in the packing department, you'll have a great month's P&L. The next five months may not look so good after that. But you want to quantify complaints. So that would be complaints either of per tonne, usually on a big laundry, or it might be per thousand garments on a retail laundry. And you want to quantify on-time delivery. So on-time delivery, again, what percent of deliveries are getting to the customer? Those are the two things. And when I say complaints, they could be related to quality. So for a retail garment, that's have we got the stains out. For yeah. a hospital laundry, that might be have how often have been late logging a check that we ought to have done. Can we prove the process the whole way through? And But for most of them, it's going to be how many complaints have actually come through. And the really important thing is to make sure you've got real firm data so don't try and put a KPI on something that you haven't really got so net promoter score is a brilliant KPI and I imagine just clean would be very good with net promoter score and you've probably got all the data for most laundries and certainly most the even dry cleaners in Europe it'd be really hard to capture that it is key and certainly for an OPL you're not going to have a net promoter score so make sure you can get the data and if you really want customer data and you can't get it from all of them pick a small sample size talk to a handful a month and see how you really are doing and the other thing is those targets need to be discussed a kpi from the top down where you give someone a bit of paper and say you've got to achieve a thousand next month well if they're doing it already they'll say great and if they think they've got no chance they won't you've got to give people a pathway to get there or an example of someone else who's doing it. I, I've talked to Nikos before and he would say, well, he would say, I've got three laundries in this group. I've got this one down to this much. So surely you can do it as well. That always helps. So they know it's real and they're a little bit invested. I think it helps to link it to pay as well. But 
not so there's a massive benefit and if you're going to link it to pay you have to make sure it's auditable otherwise you'll find you've sold 400 uh, you sold 400 tons but your kpi system says you've done 600 and that's probably the last thing i'd add where you've got a sold match you don't care how many garments you processed you care how many garments you've sold you don't care how many kilos you processed you care how many you've sold and that will relate for an opl again that's harder but you can relate it to maybe rooms changed it's yeah. calculating that and getting the waste but keep it simple keep it simple thank you i think uh, from my perspective uh, we have some very basic metrics like pieces per operator hour that we use commonly uh, and that that very much ranges depending on the type of, of laundry facility you're operating so if it was a garment laundry you, you might be 60 or 80 uh, if it was a, a very tight product range in, for example, a hospital laundry, you might be pushing up to 200. So it very much depends on what, what you're doing. So I think the starting point is to start measuring. If you're not measuring already, start measuring now. So start measuring your, your water consumption and your electric consumption, your steam consumption, your gas consumption. Start measuring your productivity. But be honest, you know, benchmark it now and then set realistic goals 5%, 10% increases, uh, because if you do a, a thousand things 1% better, then you, you're going to have a, a really good positive improvement in your, in your processes and your bottom line. So thanks, guys, for that. Um, so I just uh, would like to add one more point, Steve, here. Yes, go uh, on. When you are talking about star productivity, that's one of the important KPI, what we are talking about, PPA watch. You know, pieces per hour, uh, what you mentioned now, per operator hour productivity. You know, this is very, as you mentioned, means for when you are processing uh, garments, uh, you have some PPOH, which is pieces per operator hour is different. So that is one of the main uh, KPI, which, you know, you have to keep uh, on, keep eye on it. Like when you are processed about garments, we are talking about garment, there is different. When you are talking about healthcare, and when you are talking about journal uniform, you have to keep an eye on that also, okay. which is called staff. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Next question, now, what are some of the advantages of today's laundry management systems? So Aziz, would you like to kick off with that, please? Yes, Steve. Uh, based on the experience that we faced when we entered the market uh, just clean like four years back, we realized that many of the laundries, we're talking about the small and retail laundries, they don't have a system that to deal with. They still work in outdated, still paper and pen. So we tried to develop a system in order for them to have a better uh, data reading. There is nothing right now important much as reading your data. And uh, by far, uh, majority of the laundry was the latest to enter this management system wallet. So how important is the data and the advantage of the data? It's like initially you will be able to know your target audience customer. You will be able to read your data. You will be able to helps you to kick off uh, even the marketing plan that you have to see your daily transactions, uh, the pickup time uh, that you have with for operation, the offline season that you have, the most selling item, the most damaged item. It will help you to also generate a VAT and tax report. Uh, it's outstanding payment, uh, creating bundles for regular customer, generating customer for your VIPs customer or high value customer and low value customers. Uh, it helps you to see also uh, your lost customer and how you do retention to that. So it's very important to have such a system right now. Once we enter the market now, we have seen we've taken uh, a huge milestones now in the market after three to four years, seeing a lot of laundry starting now using the system and the management system for them and trying to convince and to see how it's important to go from the outdated uh, style and the old management paper and pin to the importance of data and reading uh, and having a system in your premises right now. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Aziz. Um, Mohammed, what are your feeling on the advantage of, of today's laundry management systems? I believe it's 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 more essential nowadays. More essential. Uh, Oh, sorry, I think I've lost you, Mohammed. Can you hear? Me? You're you're in and out a little bit. Uh, go on, go try again.
No. Can you hear me now? Can you hear yeah, me now? Go on. Go on. We can hear you. It's more, uh, yeah. It's really essential uh, to prove the point that you the, the as, as was the colleague for the, uh, the productivity person. And imagine the technology allows. Is everybody else hearing Mohammed okay? Um, it's breaking up. There's always yeah. one person in a Zoom call. It's a bit of yeah. a lot. You're just breaking it, so. up a little bit, Mohammed. I'm just checking. It's not just me that can't hear you. So. Can you just pass the questions to someone else? I'll just try to. Okay, no problem, problem. Mohammed. Yeah. So, so um, Andrew, what were your feelings as say on the advantage of, of today's laundry management systems? Because I know that's some an area that you've uh, had some experience in in the past. Yeah, well, I would actually say this is one of retail sometimes looked as the backward cousin of laundry. Retail is the one that's actually really got some of the best all singing, all dancing systems. I think when I look at what we call industrial, so hospitality, hospital and kind of industrial garments, we've got a long way to go to catch up with industries like the food industries. So they, they really they're walking around with iPads that tie into the data you know, their head office knows when the floor hasn't been cleaned at the right point half an hour after, and there's a message coming back in the other way. I know there's some fantastic systems and some fantastic companies out there, yeah. but I'm not really seeing them adopted. And I'm told by friends who work in the food industry, the difference between what we do and what they do is they tie less to machinery manufacturers. And I think we've got some great machinery manufacturers, but they have a system that works so they can buy machines from 14 different places. And they run it off computers. And if you get a chance to go around what these places do, it will show you where we're probably going to be in five, 10 years. And the other thing I think is relevant at the moment is maybe COVID will help us to catch up with that because suddenly our product safety is going to be and traceability will become as important as the food industries or certainly it will get closer. Whereas at the moment for a hotel, if you ask them about the hygiene, a year ago, then probably it's really important. Have you ever dug skin like with the laundry at all and asked them to prove it? They probably have, haven't ever. Yeah. It's only when someone complains they get a rash and then they phone up Nikos and say it's definitely his fault as the chemical supplier. But that was as far as it went. Yeah. So we've got a way to go, I would say. Okay, brilliant. So we'll just do some additional areas then. I'd just like to ask the panel um, what. Uh, what measurement are, is it important to measure quality? Is that a, a KPI that we should be considering? So, Nikos, what's your feelings on, on, on quality? Well, talking about quality and talking about the end product, uh, number one factor is textile quality. Uh, that you start off with, yeah. Yes, and uh, as you may know, diversity has a very advanced and sophisticated lab in our European headquarters in Utrecht, in the Netherlands. Uh, and this lab has done some extensive work on defining the quality parameters. And uh, we have issued the so-called linen purchase guidelines for towels, dairy towels, uh, FMB napkins, and flat work linen. And believe me, the, the definitions of thread count and uh, GSM are on the bottom of our list. So I would say that first, customers have to be educated. I'm doing, and diversity is doing the best they can in spreading those linen bind specifications around. And uh, we actually help big accounts on how to select the best linen supplier. Uh, just I'll give you an example very fast. Uh, hotel chain X has recently sent us linen samples from five different suppliers. We didn't even ask them to name the supplier. We named them supplier A, B, C, D, E. We ran extensive tests and we found out, we told the customer which supplier has the best classification. Uh, you know, one supplier doesn't necessarily have the best classifications with S. One supplier may have the best uh, bed linen, another one may have the best towels. But what we did, and the customer happily accepted the charge, and the charge was no less than 480 euros a piece. 
the customer accepted the charge because the linen suppliers were reputable enough to accept it. So we charged the customer, the hotel, and the hotel had put this charge as a clause in their tender that we're gonna send samples to an external lab. The samples will be measured and any supplier, any textile supplier that respects themselves would happily agree on that. So the hotel in each turn charged the suppliers. What does it tell us? It, it, this told us that this specific hotel chain is taking their linen purchases very seriously. And really, if you see what is the expenditure, what is the, the amount of money that has to be produced out of a hotel's pockets to buy new linen, I truly believe they did the best job possible. So let's go out there. Let's try to educate our customers why linen is the best KPI. And now let me put a sustainability uh, factor here. If we see it from a sustainability point of view, uh, maybe most of us in this panel know that in order to produce one kg of cotton, we need to consume 10,000 liters of water. Okay, if we are in Egypt, maybe it's 8,000 liters. But those numbers I'm telling you uh, have not come out of the top of my head. These are real numbers and you can search. Uh, you can look, at, look, look them up. So to make a point here, 10,000 liters of water in order to produce one cotton, one kg of cotton is much more than the total amount of water needed to wash this one kg of cotton throughout its lifetime. So preserving linen is one of the highest priorities for any laundry operation, uh, not only for laundry operations who own their linen, but even commercial launders who respect themselves and the environment. Yeah, thanks Nikos. I, I agree with you totally. We, we're currently doing an independent uh, assessment of a tender in the Middle East region and in the Russian Federation for a large hotel chain, just for towels. Um, uh, we, we, we obviously do a lot of testing uh, in-house here. Uh, what we find is that the manufacturing of the linen, if it's done uh, carelessly, can actually reduce the life of the linen by 20, 30% or even more sometimes. So I, I echo what you're saying, and, and it's something that we find very commonly that the cheapest item isn't always the best item because it may well have been uh, had a lot of its life removed just purely by poor manufacture uh, in the in the mill uh, wherever that may be in the world so i agree with you with that uh, so thank you for that the other the other question i'd like to ask um is is what other kind of measurements uh, should we be doing in the in the in the laundry uh, should we be measuring uh, Productivity, yes, perhaps. Um, but how should we be measuring quality? What what measurements can we do in the laundry to measure the quality of the product as it's produced on a day to day basis? And I'd like to ask, uh, um, I'd like to ask Abdul that question, please. Okay. Now, once you are talking about the quality, when you are uh, and uh, process, when I'm talking about the process, process quality, there's, there is many things involved. When we are generally talking about the quality, process quality, I just uh, uh, figure out, uh, divide it into in your process, which is five factors, you know. Five factors means what is your process time, how's temperature, what is the water, what is uh, the mechanical action on that, and quality of water. So these are the five parameters what you are looking in generally in your quality. First, first, first of all, if you, you start your wash process and you, you, your chemical is going proper amount of this one, when you are talking about your washing machine or washer extractor, and simply you find out your drain wall is leaking or your water is not cut off or your steam is not reaching the temperature. So you will not get your proper result. So these are the five factors of cleaning important either one of the factor when you are going to increase. So another factor you have to recheck again, either you have to reduce it, either you have to recheck it, one is that. The four yeah. important for me, the quality of water is very important. You have to check what is your quality, water, of, uh, water quality. Either the parameter when you are talking about the hardness, when you are talking about, you know, 
uh, the pH and other parameter is okay in your wash quality. Okay. And well, how do we are, measure uh, the how do we measure the quality of the finished product? How do we know if it's if it's if it's clean? How do we know if it's white? How, how what, okay, what can we very good. This one. Now, once once it comes out, see, during your process time, you have to check your process. Process means when you are talking about washer extractor or tunnel. So uh, in your process, when you are injecting any, any chemical, I said, you have to do the titration process. When you do the titration process, you will come to know what amount of chemical you are using is right amount of chemical. The final finishing pH is okay, fine. Once it comes out, drying finish and everything, you have to check the whiteness. Let's say you are doing the whiteness test. Either do you do the whiteness test in internal, you, uh, 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 there is a process what you are going call a tissue test uh, samples, what you are putting inside your tunnel and you wash 20, 25 times washing and that process uh, uh, do the test. It will give you if, if any wear and tear happened during the chemical process, you come to know if there is any, 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 you know, whiteness, what is there, there is two whiteness, Y value and G value, Y value with journal, you're talking about, you know, optical brightness in your thread is okay. Journal whiteness is okay. This is called a tissue test samples. Journal whiteness, what you can uh, check by your reflectometer, you can check it once it comes out, what is your whiteness? is give you measuring what is your whiteness journal when you are kept, you know maintaining the record when 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 you are talking about uh, you know journaling inside the temperature in your tunnel you you are using rfid the temperature right of amount of temperature is going in your process ph you have to check in your once once it comes out final fish, finishing uh, bed sheet or linen ph after processing th keep in mind you know your equipment malfunction will increase your uh, damage and increase your rewash. When I'm talking about e uh, malfunction of equipment, let's say the flat work iron, when you are talking about flat, flat work iron, washing is good, neat and clean. Once you press and comes out, your pH is everything okay. But when your uh, flat work iron chest is not properly waxing or lubricating, it's not lubricant properly, it can cause of issue. If there is, if your, you know, guide tape is not there, you have an issue. If you have belt is not okay, something you can damage up your linen. So this process, when I wash, yes, you have the process in the tunnel process, but tissue test samples, you have reflectometer, you have to check. There is an other tissue test pieces we can use it, how the detergent efficiency in your tunnel, in your process. So there are certain parameter, which is called a titration process during your wash process. After wash process, there is, you know, the parameter there is before washing, before pressing, final finishing, and after final finishing. Uh, these are the parameters where you can check your quality. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we've, we've had another question come in. Are KPIs all the same in different types of laundries? Are they the same in commercial laundries as in OPL laundries? Uh, what are your feelings on that, Andrew? Um, no, they should be fairly no. drastically different. If um, by a commercial... Oh, we've lost you now, Andrew. Okay, sorry, we've lost Andrew. Uh, Mohammed, would you like to pick up on that? Do, do you think K KPIs are the same in all types of laundries? Uh, I totally agree with uh, Andrew. It's it's totally different. It's it should be different. Um, I want to highlight something very important that Abdul uh, finished with. I want to start with. Uh, Quality, quality checking on, on a certain things, on many things can be done on manual on a regular basis, taking samples of the water, taking samples of the whiteness of the bed sheets. Few things in the past were very difficult. One of them was the challenge to check bed sheets quality. When you feed it in the machine, it's wet. It's almost impossible to know any stains there or not when it's wet. And after it's being dried and ironed, it will go automatically yes. to the to the folding machine. So there is no chance that you can open the bed sheets to check whether they were stains, holes, or anything. Technology comes here with the systems like 3D cameras, with automatic rejection systems to scan those items between after being ironed and before they are being folded. So this technology comes in, in a places that really solves lots of issues that they were happening in the past. Right, thank you. Um, Aziz, have you anything to add with that? What, what would you say with, with the differences between KPIs from, from perhaps a, a retail 
uh, environment to a, an OPL and also to a commercial uh, laundry? Yeah, I agree with gentlemen. It's a bit difference between uh, retail commercial laundries and difference. Uh, here, when you deal with B2C customers, normal regular customers, it's completely different than when you deal with an entity like a, a, a hospital or a hotel or something. It's totally two different line of, of system, two different quality checks. Uh, uh, here, you're talking about two different segmentation of customers. Uh, we focus more into the retail. We focus more into the customer. And it's, B2C uh, clients, uh, that's maybe in a lower scale, but more uh, operational issues that can happen with this laundry when they deal with customer because it's not easy to satisfy also the, the normal customer there. But it's a big, uh, it's a big business uh, that we are tackling here in the market, looking about these clients and trying to offer the quality of service here. I'm sure everyone trying to offer the best quality as per its customer audience, but I see this completely difference here between the two segments. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think I think you've got you know more customer focused um, KPIs in the retail industry. Definitely, I think in on-premise laundry, uh, the KPIs are, are, are probably a little bit harder to, uh, to to nail down because you don't have an end an end income or an end customer to. Uh, to, to be concerned of, so I think yes, there are there are some some differences, but I think general KPIs um, from my perspective would include kilograms per kilo uh, of of water, uh, 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 kilograms uh, per, uh, per kilowatt produced uh, for energy, uh, liters per kilo for water. Um, we would be looking at pieces per operator hour or kilos. Uh, produced per day per per operator, these are kind of pretty standard uh, metrics. It's only when you start to get into individual kind of um, environments where where you you really need to nail down and drill down to the the, the things that matter. But as I as I said earlier, I'd, I'd like to reiterate. I think the the main thing is to start measuring if you're not already. So choose, your, choose the areas that you can measure and you can measure easily uh, and start, start there. The worst thing you can do is not to measure and not, not to record. Uh, so, so get on that journey if you're able to, uh, but make it achievable uh, and measurable. So don't, don't make the task too difficult for yourself. Uh, ensure that it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward. Okay, so... Um, Again, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add, Nikos, to that uh, to that point about uh, about different metrics and different uh, KPIs in different environments? I'd like to touch on something related to the first question. The first question had to do with the new normal. The new normal has to do with upscaling hygiene standards. So yeah. what we were saying in our trainings in diversity to all customers was that they need to upscale their practices to healthcare standards. And I will also touch on uh, from something that Abdul Samad said at the beginning that uh, personal hygiene is very important. And for this reason, I will tell you that all healthcare laundries, which all other laundries should be looking up to, have vaccinated personnel, not COVID-19 vaccinated personnel, Hepatitis B vaccination. Hepatitis. Hepatitis. So if we really want to upscale to healthcare standards, OPLs and commercial laundries have to vaccinate their staff for Hep B. Because believe me, these workers in OPLs and uh, commercial laundries are not more immune than healthcare workers. They are the same, similarly, similarly susceptible to this kind of viruses. So they have to be vaccinated. Okay. This Thank will you. truly enhance and upscale the exactly. hygiene standards. Thanks, Nikos. So, and I think I'd like to give one final word to Mohammed because we've we we got cut off with you, Mohammed. So anything else you'd like to add to the conversation, Mohammed? Uh, talking about the first question, uh, as the gentleman mentioned, I think I think it's very important to upscale. It's very important to upscale the, the hygienic level. It was very important before, but I think it's now more essential. So process and even in, in the hospitality, it should be almost, if 
I would say I would recommend to be treated as exactly as the same as the healthcare, because now contamination it's it can be everywhere. It can be in the yes, hotel, in the hospital. So I think the new normal should be should be one standard for the top hygienic Everybody. level in all type of laundries. I think that's a really good point you make. I think you know we don't know what we don't know. So we don't know if linen coming into us is contaminated, no matter what environment it's coming into. So I think that's a very sensible point you make. Uh, there's one more question that's just come in, um, directed uh, essentially to um, Nikos, but uh, I can handle it if, you, if you're not comfortable, Nikos. And the gentleman's asking, Anwar Mohammed is asking, uh, how do we establish thread count? Uh, how can you find it out, what the thread count of the bed linen is? Uh, the answer is very simple. Uh, thread count is an expression of number of, thre of threads in one square inch of textile. So when we receive textile samples in our lab, we follow this exact method. We cut one square meter of the textile and we dismantle it. We take all threads out one by one and we measure them under the microscope. Yeah, this probably. is the way. We, we use what we call a piece glass, which is a, a small a magnifying glass yes. with, a, yeah. with a graded um, um, ruler on the side of it. And we measure a square inch, and multiply that up or a square centimeter. So it's, it's quite easy to do. You should be able to buy a piece glass online or on eBay or on Amazon, and you should be able to, uh, to count the threads under, under magnification. You just need to have plenty of time because it takes yeah, time. Yeah, and good eyes, very good eyes. Very good eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, finally then, um, I think uh, we're, we're, we're coming towards an end of the session. Um, personally, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, participating and for the questions that have come in. Um, I think uh, that we've time just for one more question. Um, the final question is, uh, how much importance should service providers give towards training their staff and how regularly? So uh, again, I'd like to ask uh, 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 Aziz how, what you think, how important training is, please. Yes, uh, it's a good question. Actually, we do have in-house here team for training uh, for people for so many aspects. Uh, training about uh, how important it's like fixing the quality of issue, training about how to using data management system. I have a team around the GCC always on the floor jumping between laundry to laundry. We are dealing here in the market with more than 500 laundries across GCC. So we have a big team of training that keeps going outside. Some training goes on daily basis, some on weekly basis, some on monthly basis, based on the performance of each laundry, how they are responsive, how they are willing to adapt and how they're willing to improve uh, their systems and their KPIs in order to have a better service and quality service for customers. So this is one of the KPI that we measure here. It's a training team going, making training for people and also training people for how to use SaaS system, how to use the management system also. It's a very important because sometimes we deal maybe with certain people, they are not yet tech savvy and they have a problem with technology. So we yeah. try to deal and help with them to how to educate them the importance of reading the data and using the data uh, in a very ecosystem way. So, so probably to finally uh, uh, wrap things up, it's probably true to say that well-trained staff automatically improve your KPIs. 100%. Very good. Yes, 100%. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I think, I think that's it for now. I think Fatima is going to uh, just, just close the session up now. So thank you guys mm -hmm. once again. You've been, uh, you've been great to listen to. Thank you very much for your thank input. You. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Steve. That was really an engaging session and very informative as well. And uh, definitely it's been an exciting afternoon for all of us, you know, getting to hear from so many school of thoughts, listening to stories, incidents of how people have tackled their challenges and most importantly, you know, discovering newer opportunities that the industry as a whole can take advantage of. So definitely would like to thank all of you speakers for taking time out for us. And of course, our sponsors, uh, the gold sponsor, Alliance Laundry Systems, and our silver sponsor, the TRSA Middle East chapter. And not to forget all of you who took time out to be part of the Topathon as the audience and definitely been so engaging by getting all your questions answered by our experts out here. 
but i hope the conversations don't end here today we can carry this through our various platforms our various mediums and positively i would like to look forward to you know changes one can bring into the industry at large so from all of us here at the clean middle east i wish you all a happy evening and until next time do stay safe thank you thank you thank you very much Thank you.